Yes, this is another video about the loom pad. And um, you would be forgiven for thinking that this channel is all about the loom pad. And I just want to clarify that this channel is all about stereoscopic viewing. And I will be covering other things as well. But this just happens to be the first device that I have acquired and have had a chance to have a little bit more of a detailed look at. And there are some exciting things that have come up as I had a look at the loom pad that I want to share with you. Uh, it is an exciting product in my mind. There's, um, it's got great potential. So I do want to share some extra things with you. But do be aware that I will be covering other things as well, hopefully in the near future. Now, in this video, I'm going to be covering the Leah Cam. I have briefly touched on the Leah Cam in the software review that I've just recently done. But I think the Leah Cam, although it is a minimal viable product, still justifies a video of its own, not so much because of the front end, but because of the formats that it generates, of how the front camera is handled somewhat differently to the rear camera. So it's the back end that I want to cover here. Uh, the front end will shortly change. There is a new camera coming out imminently from what I understand and that may change everything that I say. I suspect that it will mainly change the front end. Um, so hopefully what I talk about in this video will still be relevant later as well. Do look out for the new release and um, if it justifies another video I'll be considering that as well. But for now let's just have a look at the file formats of the camera app of what happens behind the scenes of this application. Layer Cam The uh, Layer Camera app is for taking uh, videos and images from the front camera as well as the rear camera just like uh, on any other mobile device. The difference here being is that it is geared at taking content that can then be played back on your light field display. Uh, and uh, in particular your rear cameras are suitable for that because there are two cameras uh, that then allow you to take in stereoscopic content and uh, also has the ability of converting that into, uh, into depth maps. So for your front camera, you're basically taking pictures uh, straight to a standard JPEG in 2D format. Same with your video. The uh, video is also just a standard MPEG and um, they are just flat 2D files. So nothing special there. Um, for the rear cameras, when you take a photo, it stores it as a JPEG. But in addition to that, it also stores and hides away in that file a depth map. So that is not something that you see when you open up the image. If you were to open up that image uh, just in a standard image viewer, uh, you would only see the JPEG. This uh, depth map is hidden away in the file. Uh, not accessible to you, but is, uh, is, is there so that uh, the applications, the player applications on the loop pad can then utilize it. The same thing, by the way, is also done for the other camera. So you have a left eye and a right eye view, and both of those have a depth map that is stored as well. Uh, those three additional images, like I said, are not uh, visible to you. They are hidden away in that file, uh, but they are there and they are useful for the layer player. When you take a video, uh, that is simply stored as a side-by-side -side format, uh, as an MPEG. Uh, nothing special there. It basically takes the left eye and the right eye, concatenates them together and creates a MPEG video for you. Okay, so like I said, the front camera's uh, images and videos, they are 2D. The uh, rear one is a special format that allows you to view things in 4 view and uh, stereoscopic view as well as 2D, obviously, uh, natively. So all of that information is already within the file. 
uh, for your side-by-side -side format that natively has a stereoscopic view because of the two images and the 2D view uh, just by using one of those images but it natively doesn't have the four view uh, embedded in the, in the file. Now, <laughs> you, you may argue with me that, well, if I have SBS format uh, stored on my Loompad and I look at it with the, uh, with the layer viewer, sorry, with the layer player, then uh, I can see uh, that the four view is available. That is true. The four view is available because the four view is generated on the fly. It is not inherently in the side-by-side -side format. The side-by-side -side format doesn't contain information or depth maps or additional views. Uh, hence, I haven't listed it here as, as highlighted uh, as for view. The format itself doesn't natively contain it. The application generates that on the fly for you. However, um, all those formats that don't have the four view natively, you can create the four view format for those using other applications. So just going back to the front camera, uh, your pictures can be converted into four view uh, with a 2D to 3D converter that is part of that application. Um, your 2D video content can be converted into four view as well using the Lightfield Studio. Your side-by-side -side video format generated by your rear camera can also be transformed into the four view format using Lightfield Studio. So in the end, uh, all of the formats using all the tools that are provided, you have the ability to create four view content. Next, let's have a look at what the camera app actually looks like. So let me just fire that up. And as I do so, you'll notice that it is, at this stage, a fairly basic app. It's a minimal viable app uh, at this stage. And I've had, a, I've had the privilege of having had a talk with David Fattel the other day, the CEO of Layer Inc. And he shared with me that there is, in the near future, a new camera app that is uh, going to be released uh, that is going to have more features. So that's something to look forward to. For now, let's just have a look at what this app does. And I'm using the um, rear cameras here. And uh, we're just going to take a photo of this plant here. So let me just do that. There you go. And that will be taken in uh, 3D. Uh, in the full light field mode that we can have a look at later. One thing to note here is that you do not see this here while you're taking the photo in its light field mode. You need to go into the player later once you've taken the image to view that. Let's also go and switch across to video. You'll notice that with, with video we have the 2D and the 3D option. So I'm just going to start off taking a video with 2D and then we'll switch it across to 3D. So here we go, I'm going to start taking that video, just walking along here in 2D. All right, that's enough. Okay, and um, now I'll switch it across to 3D and we'll do the same thing in reverse, filming this in 3D. Okay. Now you can swap the camera orientation. You can swap the orientation so that you now see myself with the front camera. You can take a video uh, or a photo with that camera. But like I said, they are just uh, 2D images, just like with any other um, photo application on any other mobile device. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. There's one more point I want to make about the front camera, uh, sorry, about the rear camera and taking 3D images with that. And that is when you take this into portrait mode. If you take an image in portrait mode, your cameras are orientated on top of each other. They're not next to each other. And that does not cause the right parallax for your eyes. So in stereo mode, you will not actually see this stereoscopically. So I take an image of that. If you put that into 
stereoscopic mode in your viewer, it will not appear stereoscopic. It will actually look uncomfortable. But if you look at that in your 4V mode, in your 4View mode, it does actually work, surprisingly. And the reason for that is it captures a depth map. And with that depth map, it can reconstruct the four views correctly. But with the two stereoscopic images, it does not reconstruct your stereoscopic view correctly. So my recommendation would be that you would always take images in the landscape mode, because then your cameras are orientated the correct way. I've mentioned a couple of times in this video of this file that is generated with the front cameras. This layer image file that has embedded in it the depth maps as well as the images. If you're anything like me, um, you might want to get hold of those depth maps for your own use. And uh, what we've done is we've created a little application. It's a Windows-based application. Unfortunately, we haven't got it as a um, iOS application. And it's also not a fancy application, so don't expect anything uh, with bells and whistles. It's just a little hacked up application to extract those depth maps out. But I've put, placed them on my website and feel free to download those for your use. Now there is a donate button on my page. You don't need to use that. It is free for you to use. If you do end up donating, I'll pass that on to my son. He is a computer science engineering student who's actually written this application and um, he would obviously appreciate that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and God bless. Thank you.